Now see, try to see this. The one which you see on the diagram on this uh, left hand side uh, is a clone clutch. Okay. Now what is the basic difference between this cone clutch as well as your uh, regular clutches? What happens on this uh, cone clutch? Now first of all, uh, at the starting of the class, I said that there are different types of clutches. One is called as claw, claw okay, or jaw clutch, which is also called as posture clutch. And second thing is friction clutch, clutches. Now one of the friction clutch okay, is disc clutches or plate clutches we call it as where we have a normal plate which we have studied single plate and multi plate and here there is something called as a cone clutch. Now what exactly happens in this case in case of cone clutch the driving shaft and driven shaft will be in the form of a cone guys see try to see this is the cone cone shaped structures you can see here. Now what exactly happens is one is called as cup this one is called as cup it is a cup cup uh, cup shaped structure which is attached to the flywheel this part is attached to the flywheel this is attached to the flywheel now this is a cone which we call it as usually okay cone this is attached to the transmission shaft this is the gear drives transmission shaft is nothing but your gear drives now this kind of cone clutches are widely used in um, vehicles where high speed is very much necessary now the specialty is what happens is it can also deliver very high torque it can also deliver very high torque that is one of the advantage of this cone clutch case. okay it can deliver totally high torque now try to see in this case the parts of this uh, cone clutch if we observe okay. now there is a cone this is called as a female cone or uh, you have uh, it is also called as uh, outer cone female cone or outer cone or uh, sometimes it is called as cup so this itself is called as cup okay see cup. now this is attached to the engine shaft indirectly that flywheel okay so this is what we call as a driving shaft this is called as a driving shaft now there is a driven shaft it has written here clearly so driven shaft okay now both is this driving actually it should be driving shaft and it should be driven shaft okay or gearbox shaft now what happens is here there is one more uh, cone can you see here or he has written it so one more cone uh, here on the top of this cone if you see there there is a friction lining here so here this part is the friction lining. the friction lining would have kept what happens usually this material is made of steel this material the entire cup is made of steel and the friction lining will be made of leather or asbestos cork there are different materials which they do and if you can observe clearly the shaft will be splined shaft as usual the shaft will be splined the shaft will be there okay and one more thing which you need to observe here is there is a spring here is there is a spring here now see normally the type of spring which you used we have used in case of uh, single plate and multi plate clutches the springs are uh, kind of dark from springs but in this uh, cone clutches we use helical springs we use the helical uh, springs so as soon as you push this uh, lever push the lever the lever will try to push the springs back side thus the disengagement will happen so there is a sleeve as soon as you press the lever so this lever will try to push the spring back okay by in default position what happens is this is called as a compression spring means obviously this uh, helical spring helical compression spring which we call it as so by default position it will be up the spring would have been applying the pressure it ensures that the clutch will be in engagement position so whatever the engine if you want to try to change the gear in such cases press the pedal okay press the pedal so that it will disengagement will happen then you can change the gear and once again leave it what is the advantage in this case is uh, very much easy smooth engagement and disengagement that is one of the advantage of this complex process so the basic advantage in this case so this is how it looks so here obviously this is uh, this one the cone the inner part and outer part this is the enter cone how it looks that it looks the same thing which i have written there is a driving shaft there is a driven shaft inner cone and outer cone sometimes inner cone is also called as only cone and outer cone is called as cup okay and there is a lever okay this is a contact lever which will push the other actuating spring and the friction line so here this is a friction line the advantage is uh, more surface area of contact in this case so since there is a more surface area of full circle there is a surface area of contact higher torque will be produced what are the other advantages so it is a basically a frictional clutch case it is a frictional clutch 
very much easy to engage as well as disengage the clutch okay now it can transfer very high torque this clutches can transfer totally very high torque in this case so and the different parts which i have already discussed the different parts is outer cone there is something called as inner cone friction lining and springs so these are the basic four parts of a clutch so outer cone or cup is connected to the flywheel or driving shaft inner cone is uh, connected to the transmission shaft and there is a friction lining which will be kept on the outer cone sorry on the inner cone friction lining will be placed positioned on the inner cone and springs is used for engagement as well as disengagement of this clutch okay this is what exactly the basic parts we have now here sometimes this outer cone is also called as a female cone and inner cone is also called as a male cone okay and uh, here what happens during this process one one major advantage in this case is uh, is smooth engagement and there is a disadvantage the major disadvantage is this there is something called as cone angle this angle which we call this as is called as cone angle this angle is called as cone angle or uh, actually semi cone angle i call it as alpha cone angle means two alpha if i come here so this angle if you all of us here this angle i call this as two alpha this is two alpha so here there is alpha now in this alpha what happens is the total two alpha two alpha cannot be less than 20 degrees usually what happens if this alpha is very small it is very difficult for us to disengage if alpha is very small the diff, the, it is not so easy to disengage that is one disadvantage second disadvantage is imagine if this part is worn out some part is worn out let me say one line is worn out so what what happens you need to push the pedals more this in the cars if you will have seen this old cars uh, sometimes the clutch is not working or some cars still use uh, cone clutches there are some cars cars which they use cone clutches in such cases you need to press this uh, pedal for more because some part of the lining would have been worn out so obviously to engage it obviously you need to disengage it you need to press more so that is one of the reason why will be this is two disadvantages the remaining thing is very simple okay let me once again uh, come back uh, i'll share back oh okay i have a small video so uh, you can understand what exactly the clutch works the cone clutches uh, are you able to listen to the voice in the background yes sir yes sir we are discussing what a cone clutch is its construction working applications advantages and disadvantages so let's get into the topic the cone clutch is a type of friction clutch that has cone shaped frictional areas these types of clutches are commonly used in synchro mesh and epicyclic gearboxes now let's see the construction of a cone clutch it consists of a male and female cone part the flywheel bolted to the engine crankshaft is connected to the female part and the female part acts as the driving member the male part is made up of two units one is the central hub and the other is the outer cone part the cone part is made of aluminum and the hub is made of steel for strength the hub of the male part is splined and mounted over the input shaft of transmission and it can move axially over it the contact surfaces of the male and female parts are lined with friction material there's also a spring which presses the male part against the female part and there's a throwout bearing connected to the male part for disengaging the parts now let's see how this clutch works when the clutch is engaged the male part presses against the female part because of the springs now the male part is present completely inside the female part with its friction surfaces in contact when the engine rotates the female part connected to the engine rotates and due to the friction between the cone plates the male part rotates as well thus the motion gets transmitted from the driving member to the driven member but when the driver presses the clutch pedal the linkage moves the throwout bearing this in turn moves the male cone away from the female cone resulting in the disengagement of the clutch as soon as the driver relieves the clutch pedal the male part returns to its original position thus the reengagement of clutch so this is what exactly happens so, so there is the engagement as well as disengagement of this clutch so thus there will be so the operation is very simple this the operation is very simple so this is how exactly we will be trying to perform that the cone clutches okay uh, any questions in this cone clutches any questions so what we will be trying to do is then we will be trying to work on this uh, equations first 
so let me start with the equations so the formulas are same as the previous one case the formulas will be same the code class okay now what are the equations i'm going to use now try to see here these are the equations to solve this problem very simple okay the equation is stock equation which you have seen here okay now the basic thing which you need to understand uh, here what happens is when i'm trying to talk about equations here also we have something called a stock shear stress axial force stock transmitted with clutch and uh, everything is simple so the basic four equations uh, which you see on the screen okay even which i am trying to write it okay phone clutch one is the talk equation is empty the first equation which we will be trying to use is empty as usual okay now the second equation okay it is the diameter sorry it has been misspelled as shear stress second equation you will be trying to find the diameter okay to find the diameter you should know the values of tau s you should know the value of eta to know the value of tau s you should know the value of sigma y you should know the value of r sigma itself you should know the value of sigma to know the value of sigma you should know two values one is called as sigma y and one is called as tau s this is what exactly you need okay if you want to find the value of d okay and here to find the value of mt you should know the value of capital n and you should know the value of small n this is what two things required the next one is something called as axial forces f a okay now try to see here this equation axial force uh, the axial force formula is almost same as the previous if you remember if you can recall the formula of axial force in the previous case okay i had two axial forces one is called as uniform strength and sorry uniform pressure and uniform wear if you remember this the axial force equations we have two equations now try to see uh, let me talk about this uh, equations in case of uh, multiplet clutches if a is equal to pi p d2 square minus d1 square by 4 you remember which condition is this which condition is this uniform wear or uniform pressure which condition uniform is this uniform pressure uniform pressure okay uh, varun kumar unmute yourself yes sir which condition is this which i have explained uh, uniform pressure uh, now tell me what is the equation for uniform wear uh pass d1 uh sorry sir um, half into half uh, half pi p d1 into d2 minus d1 mm, pi p p1 into d2 minus d1 right this is the equation yes this is the equation now try to see exactly how this equation came into picture now in case of cone clutch case in case of cone clutch okay what happens is we have a equation called as d2 minus d1 is by 2 is called as b sin alpha d2 minus d1 by 2 is called as b sin alpha now the question comes what is b now try to see this cone if you observe the cone here this is the cone okay now the shaft we have okay we have a cone and there is a friction line on the top there is a friction line so let me show it to you there is a friction line here guys there is a friction line so once again this friction line when you up this width the width which is here no the width of the face is called as b the width of the space is called as a b okay there is a friction lining here this is a friction lining the width is b now an alpha is nothing but your cone angle this angle is called as alpha this angle is called as alpha okay now what happens other thing so d2 minus d1 by 2 is equal to b sin alpha this formula is substituted here this formula is substituted okay once you substitute this formula by default 
you will end up with the equation of some learn right place for example if uh, you try to substitute d2 minus d1 by 2 now try to say we have the equation if a is equal to half p d1 d2 minus d1 okay now this d2 minus d1 by 2 is nothing but uh, b sin alpha so i have got sorry, half pi is the right okay now pi p d1 d2 minus d1 is nothing but uh, b sin alpha d2 minus d1 is nothing but b sin alpha instead of d1 this fellow was using dm instead of d1 this fellow was using dm pi p dm b sin alpha now this is the equation which you see here try to see here the equation what you have pi dm p b okay or pi p dm b sin alpha this is the equation equation number 19.75 okay the same thing if you substitute if you substitute this equation into this you will end up with the same equation you will end up with the same equation so the equation is one and the same so equation 19.75 which we will be trying to use where so that uh, here most important is we are interested to find f a at the mean diameter f a at the mean diameter so always there will be dm and as usual we have b b is nothing but width now one more thing which you need to understand in this uh, especially uh, in this part is if you are going to apply fa here if i am applying fa what exactly happens is this fa will be converted to normal force all of us here this fa will be converted to force fn this fa will be converted to force fn so this is called as normal force if you have been transmit when you push this usually by from the spring or from the lever if you will be applying fa this fa will be directly converted to fn fn is called as a normal force so usually the formula of fn will be fa by sin alpha normal trigonometry okay so fn will be fa by sin alpha now big because of this okay now because of this fn okay what happens is the flywheel or the outer cone the entire outer cone will exert the pressure. The outer cone will exert the pressure. This is the pressure. So try to understand how the exactly the force is going to transfer here. Okay, now how the force will transfer. So there is FA which you will be trying to press. Okay, because of this FA, the force will be converted to normal force. The force is exerted on the friction lining through the ends. Because of Fn, there will be P. The P is uh, nothing but the pressure generated by the flywheel from the other side. So, flywheel indirectly, not the flywheel. Now, on the flywheel, there is outer cone which is attached. The outer cone is going to exert the pressure P. Okay. And this is the different terms which you have. So, coming back to this formulas. Okay. Coming back to this formula. These are the four formulas which are more important, guys. Okay. Let me change this. Uh, these are the form formulas uh, which are more important, which we'll be trying to do. And as usual, and torque transmitted is the torque transmitted in the next formula MD. The torque transmitted you'll be using equation number 19.78. So you have two equations 19.75 and 19.78. These are the two equations only which are most important 19.75 and 19.78. Okay, first one is FA and second one is MD. So mean diameter is also not so important in this case because everything will be in terms of mean diameters. Now if I ask formula of mean diameter, the same formula says that uh, if you can remember, recall the formulas, dm is equal to d1 plus d2 by 2 as per uniform wear theory. And uh, as per uniform pressure theory, the formula is dm is equal to 2 by 3 d2 cube minus d1 cube by d2 square minus d1 square. The same formula, same equations which you have used in the previous case. Now, what else you need to know in this case is uh, most important okay now uh, what exactly you need to know there are other formulas uh, which we use i can say that okay it is not important but what exactly happens without these equations you cannot solve the problems like uh, which you see here first one other important formulas inner diameter how do i calculate the inner diameter of the structure what do you mean by inner diameter this is the inner diameter if i draw the diagram i can say that the inner diameter of the friction lining 
that if the uh, friction lining is entirely on the surface, the inner diameter of the friction lining is. Okay, this is the inner diameter of the friction lining. Okay, D1. This D1 always is nothing but Dm minus because Dm is somewhere here. The Dm will be somewhere here. The mean diameter is this. This is Dm at the center. So Dm minus B sin alpha this is what exactly you need to remember. Similarly, the outer diameter. So outer diameter is more than Dm. So we have Dm plus B sin alpha. These are the two formulas which we'll be trying to use it. Okay, the other formulas which we'll be trying to do. So this is your outer diameter. Dd outer diameter of the friction line. Okay. So once again, you have dm and in between we have something called as dm. This part is dm. So you have dm, uh, this one. So next formulas which I have already written, same saying that uh, d2 minus d1, which will be handy for you when uh, you are solving it. d1, d2 minus d1 is equal to b sin alpha. The other formula which you need to remember this. Then the normal force, fn is equal to fa by sin alpha fa by sin alpha okay uh, fa is the force which you are applying it and the normal force which will be perpendicular to the surface okay is nothing but f uh, fn here fn normal force which is perpendicular to the surface which you'll be trying to use it now what happens in this case there is one more equation which will be widely used guys so remember this equation equation uh, it says that axial force required to engage the clutch when it is rotating. So it is rotating at very high speeds. You are applying the force, but the actual force, how much is the actual force? That is what exactly this formula says. So this actual force required to engage the clutch while rotating, there is equation 19.78. Okay. I think it is 9.80. Is it? it is not 78. 78 is the previous equation. Okay, I'll, I'll see it. So there is the equation FA dash. Always remember this equation also very much easy to remember. Fa dash is nothing but, uh, so Fa dash is nothing but Fn multiplied by sin alpha plus mu cos alpha. So that's it. These are the equations. Other than this equations, the other equations which will be trying to use as usual, mt is equal to uh, 9.55 into 10 power of 6 capital N by smaller one equation which will be trying to use second equation fa fa is equal to pi dm and this equation make a note this is equation 19.80 this is equation number 19.80 in my ppt it is 78 so it is make a note now second equation pi dm pb sin alpha okay this equation you will be using 19.75 for axial load and what happens is uh, the other uh, next equation you have torque equation. One more torque by the clutch. It is given by mu FA dm by 2 sin alpha. And this equation also same guys. If you remember this uh, torque equation of the previous case, uh, in case of the start equation, half you remember half mu FA dm into I. See the this equation number I'll write. Equation number 19.78. This is equation number 19.78. If you remember, in case of uh, plate clutches, this equation MT would have been half mu FA dm i. So there is no i here. So the number of uh, surfaces, plates, you don't have contacting surfaces, no i. So instead, you have sin alpha. That's it. This is the only formula, the same formula which we are using. So you can easily remember without the dead handbook also, all the three formulas you can remember. Okay, these are the important things which you are supposed to remember. This, these are the only equations. Now, what exactly happens in your uh, in the textbooks, guys? If you are trying to find this uh, textbooks, uh, all the textbooks is other than the standard books. Let me say all the local author books, JPG Das or any other textbook. If you are trying to use, what the people say is that type one problem, type two problem, type three problem. They say obviously with the diameter, without diameter, with uh, D one, without D one. So all such, such things you don't care. Don't worry, for you the concept should be very strong. Whatever the type problems, you don't remember the types of problems. You remember how to approach. How do I approach a particular problem 
given a statement so i have the equations how do i approach the problem so you don't worry whether i'm uh, you are trying to study this type of problem sometimes that flows is so uh, the diameter dm is given and in second type 2 problem is if dm is not given what is the procedure the, so see this cone clusters uh, what happened is in local other books unfortunately there are four to five procedures this what this fellow says is type 1 problem he will say type 1 procedure is diameter dm is not given so he will write a procedure second type dm is given he will write a procedure they will write a procedure third type d2 is not given they will write a procedure so students unfortunately what is happening is uh, to make this the way they have understood they are writing the book but unfortunately when it comes to these competitive exams gate examination all such things will not happen you cannot say whether dm is given dm is not given all such things will not happen there very much clear is the concept what exactly you are trying to do how do i approach the problem whether it is given or not do you, do i know the formulas am i applying the formulas so what i'll be doing is from you know, when i'm trying to teach i don't teach like this type 1 type 2 all the things there is only one procedure this there is no uh, other thing or procedure is also i don't believe in procedures i believe in this in equations these are the equations which i am going to use whenever the depending on the situation any equation i'll be trying to use that's it other than that's nothing so one more thing which you need to remember is the points to remember these are the important points which i want you to remember always remember this whenever he gives the cone angle take it as 2 alpha and whenever you are using alpha divided by 2 let me say the cone angle is 20 degrees so by default alpha will be equal to uh, 10 degrees the next one is he sometimes he gives semi cone angle or sometimes he calls it as pitch angle sometimes he calls it as a face angle so in such cases it is alpha face angle is nothing but your alpha which will be trying to use it okay semi cone angle pitch angle or face angle the next one is uh, if most important point which you need to remember this if d1 d2 dm are not given in the question itself this value has not been given in the question in the numerical what exactly happens try to take this value assume this this will come in handy dm by 2 is equal to 6 now how exactly this equation this came this is there in the data handbook is this is there in the data handbook of the equation number 19.81 but don't remember this in this 19.8 equation what is this fellow would have written 4.5 to 8 somewhere but usually it is dm by b will be always 6 okay or from this equation i can write dm is equal to 6b now this to be assumed only when i do not have a relation between d1 and d2 he has not given or d2 and dm i don't have any diameters see all three diameters have written d1 is not given d2 is not known and dm is not known then only i go for this then only i go for this equation else we don't go for this equation the other points which you are supposed to remember that uh, friction material is always leather okay if he has not given anything and uh, once you have selected the leather you will be using table number 19.7 by default you will be using table number 19.7 for determining coefficient of friction as well as speed you know how to determine now the question comes it is dry or wet friction always in case of multi plate clutches it is wet friction single plate clutches it is dry friction and in case of cone clutches also it is dry condition cone clutches also dry conditions okay and the last point which you need to remember is uh, the mean diameters is same as disc clutches so d1 dm is equal to but i don't think so you'll be making use of dm very widely here directly i'll get the dm from the formula itself dm i will be getting from the formula itself so whatever you see on the note screen here this is the only equations which you need to cleverly use it whenever the situation comes cleverly use this whenever the situation comes if you can remember this you and there is no point of uh, opening the data handbook also then if you can remember these equations you have your concept you should know what exactly where exactly i'm going to apply it. now here other side also which i'm trying to show which is p okay what is b here now b is nothing but the face width we call this as a face width always remember this this uh, face width is nothing but the b this value is nothing but the b this is the face width okay this is what exactly they will be asking any questions you would like, you want to ask me right now before i start the new modules anything you would like to ask me is it clear anything you want me to repeat no sir 
right so and, and uh, dear friends uh, what happens is if you want me to repeat i'll repeat it if you don't understand don't sit quietly because what happens is always uh, if you don't understand we cannot go ahead that is one of the reasons so if you have not understood you can ask me so that that part i can repeat it else if i if you feel that you are comfortable we will go with solving the numerical so remember this guys once again i repeat these are the only equations which we are using basically 75 equation 78 equation 80 equation your clever usage of equations will minimize hell lot of procedures in all the books you don't believe actually no, there is one more book uh, even uh, this jbg that fellow shows a four five procedures so each problem he solves in each procedure now the question comes which how many procedures do i remember for me it is the concept which you need to remember once you are strong at the concept will go ahead okay so let me start with this uh, first numerical so question number 14 what i given so let me start here question number 14 only two things design the main dimensions of a cone structure to transmit 40 kilowatts at 1000 rpm nothing else is given 40 kilowatts at 1000 rpm and uh, no, assume suitable material for friction lining assume suitable material for friction lining so suitable material for friction lining which material should i select which material leather now table number which table should i go 19.7 so let me go to the table number 19.7 okay i have a table 19.7 just i'll have a look at the table where is the table guys okay where is leather leather is here this leather is down in the leather it is 0.3 to 0.5 as well as 0.0686 2.2746. I remember this. That's it. That's it. Why I am trying to go here is to remember this. Okay. Now for leather, if you see, observe. So for leather, this is the values which we will be trying to take. So 0.3 to 0.5, as well as 0.0686 2.2746. This is the values which I will be trying to use. Come back to the equations, the problems. Okay. This is the basic formula. Here we have our numerical question number fourteen. So what he has given in question number fourteen, he has given only two data. One is called as speed, one is called as uh, power. Okay. How do we solve this numerical? So let me solve this for you. Now, now try to see. Here. When we are trying to solve, I once again also depend on only two basic things. One is question number fourteen, given data. Capital N is equal to 40 kilowatts. Capital N has given 40 kilowatts, and small n is equal to 1000 rpm. Now, what exactly he expect me to do? Design the clutch. If you want me to design the clutch, the dimensions of the clutch, the dimensions of the clutch. Now, how do I go for the dimensions of the clutch? First, we try to uh, go for the material. Okay, what is the material of the clutch? All the assumptions which I will be trying to take now. Okay, let me handle with the assumptions. What are the assumptions I'll be taking? Material is material is equal leather. Material is leather. So once again, leather on steel. Obviously, when I say leather, so mu mu is equal to zero point. What exactly is given? 0.3 to 0.5. 0.5. So approximately, I will be taking the average value of 0.4. And also pressure. Pressure is given 0.0686, which we have seen just now, to 0.2746 MPa. So here we need to understand this is nothing but the dry friction. It is not the wet friction. Dry friction. So mu you have taken. P you have considered. Now P average you should take. So it is around 0.1716 megapascals. This is the first assumption which I'll be trying to get. It. Make it clear that what exactly you are trying to do it. So there are there are the assumptions. So we have the uh, assumptions here. Next, uh, the next part is once you have done the other other material material of shaft. This is what what material friction material. Friction material which you have assumed as leather. 
no? Middle of shaft. So which one we will assume? Which one? C forty. Ah, C forty. C forty steel will be trying to assume. So once again, sigma y is equal to three twenty a point six mega pascals. F Y S is equal to three. We have got F Y S is equal to three, and uh, tau S is oh sorry sigma three twenty eight point six divided by three, which will be one zero nine point five three N P A. Once you got sigma and tau, tau S is equal to point five times of sigma, which will be fifty four point seven six degrees. Sorry, seven six N P A. What's the second assumption which I am making? Next, what are the other assumptions which you need to make? The cone angle. He has not mentioned anything. Is cone angle? What is the cone angle? So the semi cone angle. Semi cone angle. If he has not mentioned, take the semi cone angle as 12.5 degrees alpha. Nothing but either alpha. So most important part. If he has not given a uh, cone angle, the alpha will be equal to 12.5 degrees. Okay, this is what the assumptions which I have done it. Once you are done with the assumptions, we go with the numericals. We go with uh, solving the numericals. So what he has given capital M. So your first step, the first step will be MP. MP is equal to 9.55, 9.55 into 10 power of 6 into capital N by small n into 10 10 power of 6 capital N by small n. So once again, 9.55 into 10 power of 6. Capital N is 40. Small N is 1000. Capital N is 40. Okay, we have the small N value as 1000. So tell me, man. So three eight three eight two zero zero zero. Three eight two zero zero zero. Right. I got the value. Three two triple zero. So you have your value. Now second one. Second. Once you are done with this, directly I'll go to the second formula. I said on engine point seven five. I depend on axial force. Usually in the previous step we used to go for dm. Now instead we will go for axial force. Okay. Axial force. Force F A. Axial force F A. Pi dm p b sine alpha. Now here, what happens? Uh, this is equation number nineteen point seven five. The problem comes. How many unknowns do we have? See, always remove this. Always, how do we solve the problem? Check how many unknowns we have in the each. This one. So here, I have. Uh, there is unknown D M. There is the unknown B. Okay, and uh, there is the unknown F. There are three unknowns. So what? What we try to do is in this case. I said no. In this entire numerical, there is no value of d m, no value of d one, and no value of d two. If all the diameters is not given, we have always an option. We have always an option of assuming the relation between d m and b. Okay, the relation. So once again, one more thing which I'll be trying to assume here. Take d m by b is equal to six, which implies d m is equal to six b. D M is equal to six B. This is what exactly happens uh, when the D one, D two, as well as D M is not given. I have got this value. Now try to substitute F A is equal to pi. So instead of D M, I have written six B. So pressure zero point one seven one six multiplied by B as it is multiplied by sine twelve point five. Sine twelve point five. So what is the answer, guys? Let me calculate it. So it ends around. So pi six. How many times of there is a b square, right? So how many times of b square? Point six double nine. Point six double nine. So point seven. So you have got point seven b square. You have got point seven b square. Once you are done with this, uh, this one, the third step now. Can you tell me what is the third step? 19.78 uh, equation, the last. So only see any problem can be solved within three steps. First step, second is axial force, and third one is MT torque equation. MT is equal to mu F A D M by two sine alpha. 
so this is the third step so equation number 19.78 so MD is already known for you so 38200 mu I have taken it as we have taken it assumed as 0.4 FAI is nothing but 0.7 B square DM is nothing but 6B DM is nothing but your 6B divided by 2 into sin alpha alpha is 12.5 tell me the value of B guys tell me the value of B what is the value of B now so it is around 3, 8, 2. so uh, you are getting same answer 46.17 mm 44.3 44 you are getting eh? let me calculate once again c3 2 to 0 2 into 2 into 46.17 correct na? 46.17 right right so then my answer is correct 46.17 so once you have got this value of b now i'll come back we'll start finding all the other values one is dm what is dm now dm is equal to 6b so 6 into 46.17 okay so how much 6 into 46.17 77.08 ah, then 277 okay now so i got this value is 277 now let me find the diameters what is d1 what is the formula of d1 guys you, can you can you tell me any one of you fast formula of d1 now dm minus b sin alpha right dm minus, dm minus b sin alpha dm minus sin because it is less than less than dm so b sin alpha dm we know it 277 46.17 sin alpha sin alpha is 12.5 sin alpha alpha is 12.5 we have got your answer so how much similarly d2 dm plus b sin alpha 277 plus 46.17 sin 12.5 how much sir d1 is 267 267 then d2 by default, it should be 286. How much? 3? 2? 286. 286 or 7? Now see. 287. 287. The reason is, always remember the once again, uh, this uh, should be the average of D1. Okay. So you have got 267, 287. Great answers. Now, once you are done with this, then you have already done. Let me, the pending part, FA. What is the value of FA? If you remember, come back. If I have got this something called as FA is 0.7 B square. So let me calculate FA also. 0.7 B square. 0.7 into 46.17 square. How much? 1492.16 yes, yes, I wrote that. I got it. Now, this is your problem, guys. So, once you are done with this, you need to write the summary always. There is a, always a good habit of writing the summary at the end of the number Okay. Try to write it. What, what? Any questions? Diameter of chart. chart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that also I forgot man, totally. So, diameter of the chart. So, diameter and dia D is equal to cube root of 16 mt divided by pi tau s eta pi tau s is eta so is equal to uh, 16 into what is mt you have got how much 38 38 to 0 divided by pi 54.76 into 0.75 how much is the answer 26.18 26.18 huh? 36 36 huh? is it right yes sir right so yes, sir. 40 mm from where 
from table 14.6 standard table. Now we have done. So what you are supposed to do is you need to write the summary. You need to write the summary of this. Always good man. Now the summary of this. Okay. Uh, yes, the summary is on the dimensions. Dimensions of phone plus. What are the different dimensions? D1 267 mm. Always write this. D2 you have 287 mm. DM uh, you have uh, how much is DM? 277. 277 mm. And you have B 46.17. 17. Round it up to 47 mm. Round it up to 47 mm. You have FA. You have FA 1492.17. One six meter means the force and the diameter of the shaft. Diameter of the shaft, forty mm. And in the examination, sorry, I have here. D one I have here also. So two seventy seven dm. So this is dm, and I don't know this is what. Oh, this is b. Okay. So F A you have b you have. These are the values which we are getting. So once you have got this uh, dimensions, you will be ending your problem. Now here, what is the thing is the other things uh, which uh, you can also try in the same problem, which I'll be trying to show. They have not asked, but still you can you can try. This is the extra in this problem. He may ask this: Can you can I find the axial force required while running? So what happens is you can find the normal force normal force this is extra man not asked in this problem but next problem they may ask so fn other problems they have asked it fn is equal to fa by sin alpha so fa is how much uh, i have got 1492.16 divided by sin 12.5 sin 12.5 how much 6894.1 one 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 newtons so i have got this fn we got this fn now the axial force axial force required to engage why rotating Rotating at what speed? The speed mentioned in this numerical. The speed mentioned in this numerical was 1000 RPM, right? So at the speed. So the formula is FA dash, we call it as Fn into sin alpha plus mu cos alpha. This is equation number 19.80. Equation 19.80 substitute back FA dash. Fn is how much? 6894.11. Okay, multiplied by sin 12.5 plus 0.4 cos 12.5 how much is all your fa 4184.43 this is the extra thing which uh, they may ask usually in the other problems okay once you know this that's it this you have done your numerical you are done your new but nothing else nothing else guys so this is how exactly the problem will be done so there is one more assignment which i thought of uh, giving to you uh, yeah tell me uh, semicolon angle uh, how did we get semicolon angle i have assumed in this case in this case i have assumed semicolon angle as uh, 12.5 this part means directly you said we should take right uh, about uh, 10 degrees right no, 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 it cannot be less than 10 degrees. Oh. It cannot be less than 10 degrees. Okay. Got it. And you know one thing, the semicolon angle, uh, this angle is for leather. This angle, you know, this also depends on the type of material. So this angle is for leather. For leather, the semicolon angle is 12.5. If it is less than 10 degrees, what happens is you cannot uh, disengage so easily. In this case, total uh, 2 alpha is 25 degrees. Any other questions? Any other questions, friends? 
Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right, right. So once again, uh, so there is uh, one more small uh, this one which I thought of giving you. So I want uh, if you have uh, you don't have any questions, kindly make a note of uh, question number fifteen. Take a screenshot. This is your assignment. List. This is your assignment. List. Compulsory. This is your assignment which you are supposed to do it. Uh, before so in your assignment books which uh, i may expect you to submit this slowly so try to take the screenshot i'll read the question for you what exactly it is the question is very simple okay what he has done what he has given so let me just Now, in this question number 15, he says a cone clutch has a semi cone angle of 12 degrees. So, I have not, not mentioned. So, what is this uh, semi cone angle? What is the notation? Alpha, alpha, alpha. Okay. So, semi cone angle of 12 degrees to transmit 10 kilowatts. What is this? Capital M. At 750 rpm, it is small n. 750 rpm, it is small n. The width of the face is one fourth of the mean diameter can you tell me what does it mean b equals dm by 4 uh, b is equal to dm by 4 by default we used to assume that b if he has not mentioned anything we assume that uh, dm b is equal to dm by 6 that is what we used to assume one sixth we used to assume now he has clearly given the problem b is equal to dm by 4 okay now mean diameter friction if the normal intensity of the pressure between the contact surface is not to exceed 0.085 bar so unfortunately it is small change i want you to do is don't write it as 0. let it take it as 0.85 bar can you tell me how do i convert this bar into newton per mm square any idea into 10 raised to power of 5 uh, 10 power of 5, I'll get in Pascals. Bars, I'll get in Pascals, but I need in 10 power of 6 now. Nah. I should get this bar in 10 power of 6, not right to see here. Let me say, I'll show you here. So, one bar is 10 power of 5 Pascals. Pascal is Newton per meter square. I want Newton per mm square, means 10 power of 5 Newton per meter square is Pascals. But what I need is 10 power of 5 divided by 1 meter 10 cube mm 10 cube. This is Newton per mm square. Newton per mm square. So what you'll be trying to do in this case? Uh, 10 power of 5 divided by 10 power of 6. So nothing but uh, 10 power of minus 1. Okay. Uh, 10 power of minus 1 is nothing but 0 0.1. You need to 0 0.1, which we have. So he has given us 0 0.0, 0 0.85 bar. So multiply by 0 0.1. So 0, it becomes 0 0.085 Newton per mm square. It becomes 0 0.85 Newton per mm square. This is what exactly you will be trying to use, make use of it. 0 0.085 Newton per mm square. Okay. So try to understand this. What exactly is the bar? So 0 0.85 bar. Okay. This question has been given in uh, September 2020. Uh, last recent paper, September 2020. Uh, While well, they were writing this, uh, your seniors uh, when uh, when uh, supplementary test when they were writing it in such a backlog paper. This is the question which has been given. Now assuming uniform wear criteria by default. Taking mu is equal to 0.2. So mu is equal to 0.2. Calculate the dimensions of the clutch. Also find the axial force. Try to see. Uh, also find the axial force while running. That is at the beginning of engagement. So the last part, the first, entire question number 15 is same as the question number 14 which we have solved. Same as question number 14 which we have solved. solved. So question number 15 and question number 14 are one and the same. Only one thing in case question number 14, what I have done. In question number 14, I have assumed all these values. I have assumed what is mu. Okay. And in this case, he has given that to the mu as 0.2. 
and here in question number uh, 14 we have assumed p as some value but he in this case he has given us 0.85 bar which will be 0.085 mpa okay and material of the shaft he has not given and here we will be trying to assume as usual and alpha we have uh, assumed here as 12.5 there he has given us 12 and dm by b we have taken as 6 there they have given dm by b should be equal to 4 so the entire process and at the same time this right right color thing was the normal force as well as axial force required to engage this while rotating they have asked here they have not asked in this question number 14 but they have asked in question number 15 so with this as a basics i'll be expecting you to solve question number 15 by yourself now any questions now till now